Hi, I'm Dr. Rafael Hernandez, and welcome to the first of a series of tutorials on the Corona SDK. The Corona SDK is a mobile development platform for iOS and Android devices. It's free to download and free to use, and if you want to actually publish your application, then there's a fee. What's really great about this particular model is that you can spend lots of time without any sort of personal income investment figuring out if Corona is right for you. And if you produce something that you really like, you can then choose to pay um, the subscription fee and publish your app to the App Store or the Android Marketplace. Let's get started. Upon downloading the Corona SDK, you'll find in the Applications folder, the Corona.243 folder, at least that's the name of the folder when this video has been made. This folder contains two applications that you can choose to launch. The first is the Corona Simulator. This is the main application. This application allows you to select project file and then render it to uh, one of any number of iOS or Android devices. The other application is the Corona Terminal. The Corona Terminal essentially launches the Corona Simulator, but also adds a terminal window, which is helpful for debugging. Since we're going to use the print command a lot, we'll use the Corona Terminal um, in developing our applications. So we'll double click and open it. As you can see, the Corona Simulator um, uh, has a window with lots of example files and allows us to open our own file by going to File, Open, and then following the process. We're going to create a new project by doing the following. We'll head back to the Applications folder and look inside the Corona.243 folder and navigate to the Sample Code folder, Getting Started, Hello World, and copy the contents of this folder. Now we'll navigate to the Desktop, create a new folder, and title it First Project. Open the folder and paste the contents from the clipboard. Head to the Corona Simulator. File, Open, and now we look for the First Project folder. Remember that it's on the desktop, First Project. We don't need to click the main.lua file, which is the only file that's highlighted. Instead, we just need to navigate to the root of the folder uh, for the project and then choose a device to simulate. Let's simulate an iPhone 4. So this is what this project looks like when rendered to the device. It's a simple picture of the Earth um, as taken from outer space and the text, Hello World. Now let's take a look at the code that renders this particular application to the device. Go to the first project folder and double click the main.lua file. Corona uses Lua, which is an embeddable scripting language, in order to create um, applications. Lua is very similar to ActionScript or JavaScript, but has some notable, noticeable differences that we'll point out along the way. This particular project is very simple in that it has only five lines of code. The first line, which is really line 11, because these, um, this green text here is commented lines. In Lua, you comment by using two dashes. The first line of code creates a new image called world.jpg, and that's the image of the Earth in the background. The second line creates new text called hello world, positions it, uses a um, system font at a certain size, and here we see it at the top. And then after the text is created, there's some additional positioning, for the X and the Y based on the width of the display with some math. So the width divided by two and the width divided by four. Finally, the color for the text is set. And this is also something that's um, different here. You actually have to specify individual RGB values uh, when setting color in Corona. So now what we'll do is we will uh, choose to change one particular property just to see what happens. So let's change the Y property so that we actually code a number instead of display.contentWidth to see what happens. So we'll change this to 250. 
and now go to the device and you can see that Corona has detected um, that I've changed the source of the application and so it's prompting me to either relaunch the simulator or ignore. I'll choose to relaunch. And now having changed the Y position of the text to 250, it's moved down 250 pixels. So one thing that's a bit tricky in Corona is there isn't necessarily an absolute X, Y, zero, zero origin at the top left, like you find, for instance, in Flash uh, or in ActionScript. Instead, the origin does change and can be set. And this is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing in that sometimes you want the images to be oriented um, around the center of the image or perhaps the top left or bottom right. But then if you've worked a lot with other programs like Flash and you're used to stage orientation always being in the top left, top right, etc., cetera, um, it can be a bit challenging um, to remember that the orientation of these objects isn't always the same, but we'll deal with that in later movies. So now it's time for us to create um, a project. And the first thing that we'll do is clear out all the code in the background. Let's save it and then render the device. And now we have a blank screen. We'll bring the terminal window into view. And the first thing we'll do is a simple print command. So we'll type print and open and close parentheses and we'll type a string, save it, and render the device. So here we see in the terminal window, hello world. Now we can also create some simple variables. We'll use the keyword local for most of our variables. Corona works fast with the local keyword, and the local keyword defines uh, variable scoping. Now this is a bit of a complicated uh, topic, one that we will address as it comes up uh, in each movie, but for now when we define variables most of the time we're going to use the local keyword and then the name of the variable. So first underscore name equals Raphael, my name. Then local last name equals Hernandez. Now we will display this in the terminal window. Since we're dealing with variables and not the strings directly, we don't need the quotes. First name and concatenation or the combining of strings in uh, Lua is done with two dots. Last name. Save, relaunch the simulator, and there we have my name. Notice how, the, how there's no space between my first name and last name. We'll go ahead and add that. Dot, dot, space, start quotes, space, end quotes. So we're, we're adding a string that has a space and then another concatenation. And there is my name. First name, space, last name. So this video was just to get our feet wet and take a look at um, the Corona SDK and the Hello World uh, provided by Anska. Uh, we see that very few lines of code are needed to render images or text to the screen. And also at the end, we see that we can use the print command to print contents from our uh, project to the window. And in future movies, we're going to take a look at rendering our own display images, moving them around the screen, um, experimenting with some of the uh, affordances of the device, such as touch or accelerometer or um, uh, location. Uh, and as well, we'll take a look at the great physics engine that Corona provides.